This video will cover drawing simple roofs in AutoCAD architecture. So I have a real simple floor plan here. Uh, it could be rectangle shaped or L or really any uh, relatively simple shape and AutoCAD architecture will do a decent job of putting a sloped roof on it. I say sloped because you can do uh, flat roofs as well, um, but the sloped roof is always more complex in its form. So that's where it uh, pays off to have the roof command that you can use to create a smart object for the roof. You can find your roof tools on your ribbon where there's a pull down that has roof slab, roof, and slab. I already did the video covering the slabs, so today I'll talk about the roof primarily and a little bit about the roof slab tool. You can also find these on the tool palette on the design tab. See there's your roof and your roof slab right there on the design tab of the tool palette. So I'm going to start my roof command. Just like with any of the other smart objects in AutoCAD architecture, I can look at the properties first before I start drawing. So if I look at the properties, I can see a few important settings that you will want to think about. For example, the plate height indicates the height of essentially the bottom of the roof off of your um, zero height in the Z direction. I have my walls at 12 feet. So uh, I will put this at 12 feet instead of 10 in order to align with the top of the walls. You also have your thickness, so that represents the roof itself. So you kind of have to think about how you're using the roof. Uh, are you going to cut sections? Or are you just trying to create a 3D model? Um, if you're using a thickness of something like 10 inches, then it kind of represents the framing of the top of the roof in addition to the sheathing and then the finished roof material you know, your shingles or whatever you would want on that. <clears throat> you can change the edge from either square or plumb. And I can always change these things later, by the way. I just wanted to go through some of your options. And your overhang, uh, that's pretty obvious. I'm going to leave mine at two feet. And then your rise to run. If you have any construction or design experience, you probably know kind of what that concept means. Um, if you don't, um, it's an important setting that dictates the pitch or slope of the roof. So it's always given in a something to 12 ratio, like 5 to 12, or 3 to 12, or 4 to 12, whereby the 12 indicates 12 inches or 12 feet along the horizontal, and the 5 indicates that many inches or feet on the vertical for each foot or inch that you travel on the horizontal. And then the hypotenuse that connects those two together is your slope of the roof. It's probably easier if I just show you a little diagram to kind of explain that better because we're all visual thinkers here, right? For each 12 inches you go horizontally, you go up 5 inches, and then that relates to the slope of the roof in terms of the hypotenuse of that triangle. So a 512 is steeper than a 312, for example. Now, when you're doing AutoCAD architecture, I got to start my command again here now. Uh, so when you're in AutoCAD architecture, you enter your rise as the number of inches, not feet. And the 12 is fixed. So you're just going to punch in, let's say, four if you want it to be four inches, if you want it to be a four to 12, for example. And then it calculates the slope degrees automatically for you. So I'm going to change that back to five. And now I'm ready to go. So your command line says roof point or you have a whole bunch of options. So don't worry about all the intimidating options. The basic idea of using the roof is very easy. You turn on your O snaps and then you kind of trace around the perimeter of the building. So I'm going to click around these points. Don't worry when it starts to look like an odd shape when you're halfway done. You just kind of keep going. And then when you're finished, it will look right. So after you click that last corner, just hit space, enter, or right click, and then your roof is now completed. So that looks uh, looks like it worked pretty well. Uh, again, if you um, wanted to change the settings afterwards, you could just select that roof. And then in your properties palette, you have all those same settings there for you. If you want to check it out in an isometric view, uh, you can do that. See how it looks. I'm going to make this shaded for a moment so that you can see that a little easier. Now you can see that my height is not correct, and that's why it's always good to check things out three-dimensionally to see what you forgot. And I needed to make my height at 12 feet rather than 10, 
and I forgot that. And so I can fix it very quickly by changing the plate height there in the ribbon so that now my roof is up to where it should be. Now let's talk about some other uh, customization you can do to the shape. I'm going to go back to wireframe view and back to top view so I can look at it and plan again. If I want to create gable ends instead of hip, uh, it's a very easy matter of manipulating the grips. When you select the roof, you'll see that there's kind of grips all over the place. And um, some of these are pretty obvious, like at the original object snap points where you clicked. That's the corner of the roof minus the overhang, essentially. So I could pull that grip in or out if I wanted to change the shape or the building got larger or smaller or something like that. If you take the grip um, right where the three ridges come together and pull that out past the end of the building, then you can instantly convert that end into a gable. So I can do that on both ends. Again, the grip where the three ridges intersect and pull it out past the end and click. And now I've converted both ends into a gable. So now you can see how easily that was done. By the way, if you do this, you'll need to extend your wall up in order to fill that triangular gap between the wall and the roof. You can easily do that by uh, editing the roof line, which is an option in your ribbon while you have the wall selected. So I can go up to modify roof line, and then at your command line, you have several options, one of which is auto project. And that will automatically project it up to the roof. So I can do A to access that option, and then select my roof, and then hit enter or space or right click, and it has extended up to fill that triangular hole. Um, which would otherwise be letting birds and mice and lots of critters into my attic. So that's an easy fix um, if you change the shape of your roof there between a hip and a gable. If you select the roof, you can see that you have a few other options such as edit edges and also convert to roof slabs. Remember when we talked about the two tools, you had roof and you have roof slab. The roof is kind of how you normally would want to start with the overall shape. Uh, a roof slab is like a separate plane that you can assemble together to create um, a more custom or weird shape. Um, you can also take the roof that you already have and convert it. And then that allows you to play with the pieces separately, essentially, in order to make a more unique or different shape. So if I convert, and then it asks which style to use, and then I can hit OK. Uh, I'm going to erase the layout geometry, otherwise I end up with the slabs and the roof. So now I have all these separate pieces, and I can manipulate the shapes kind of independently and in greater detail. So now I can pull individual grip points around and really kind of customize things. So I'm going to undo just to backtrack on that, but just so you know that that option is there. The roof slab could be a good tool if you're doing a uh, what's normally called a flat roof. It's really a low slope roof. You also could use the regular slab command for that because um, there's not necessarily any particular reason that you have to only use the roof object for roofs and the slab object for slabs. Um, you can use them interchangeably to a certain degree. I'm actually going to convert this back to slabs one more time because I thought about something else that I um, was going to mention. Uh, when you're in slabs mode, after you've converted your roof, you can also add dormers and edit the individual um, pieces with the modify tools up here as far as extend uh, and vertex. So in a lot of ways, it makes it behave like a floor slab in the sense of adding vertex points and extending and mitering the pieces. The other important point about the roof slabs is that it has your edit style uh, option there in the ribbon to where you can get to things like your components and the display properties. The components is, would be very important if you were doing more technical drawings and you needed to have different objects uh, assembled together to create an overall roof assembly. So in that way it works a lot like walls you can see the video on object assemblies and display properties for how to control components and how they behave in terms of the display.